international airports are finely tuned logistical machines. Running one calls for cutting edge computer technology and exceptional levels of organization, which can be undone in a moment by mother nature. A single snowstorm can cancel hundreds of flights and ruin thousands of journeys. But for some airports, snowy runways are all in a day's work. So when it comes to shifting snow from one of the world's coldest airports, how do they do it? Takeoff and landing, the most dangerous parts of any flight. In weather like this, they're even more risky. Even a few centimetres of snow can hide runway markings and cover landing lights. At Oslo's Gardermoen Airport, the winter snow can be up to 80 centimetres deep and lay on the ground for up to six months. Keeping runways clear is a full-time job for a mechanical arsenal of giant ploughs, sweepers and snowblowers. All of them built by the family firm of Overarsen. This Norwegian company have been making snow clearing equipment for over a hundred years. The current company president is Tor Au Overarsen. The bad weather, the cold weather and the snow is something we like. And we have a lot of experience being situated here in Norway with winter conditions for six to eight months a year. This decade has seen some of Europe's harshest winters. But that's good business for this firm, as sales manager Millie Overarsen explains. We have to say for us it's very good after two uh, hard winters in Europe. Uh, you know, um, uh, airports around the world really see that they need uh, strong equipment to get the snow away. And the most important piece of equipment in Oslo Airport's snow clearing operation is the UTV 600. Part plough, part blower, all action. Weighing a whopping 7,300 kilos, this ice cool heavyweight can shift 4,500 tonnes of snow an hour. With one of these on your team, clearing the runway looks easy. But building one is anything but. The first problem is how to crash through vast snow drifts that would halt most vehicles in their tracks. The answer is with a plough the size of a small car. And when that plough will be driven into walls of freezing snow at up to 30 kilometres per hour, it needs to be super strong. So they build it from sheets of Hardox 450 steel, 10 millimetres thick. Sprayed a snappy yellow, the plough forms the basic structure of the snowblower. Clearing tons of ploughed snow is the job of two vast spinning augers. At over a metre high, they make short work of even the deep snow drifts. As the augers rotate, they push the snow to the centre, where a 1.6 metre wide fan blows it up a chute. But driving monster augers and massive fans calls for major horsepower. This huge 16-litre Mercedes V8 engine pumps out over 600 horsepower, almost as much as a Formula One racing car. Enough to throw snow 35 metres. And it tosses that private avalanche with incredible accuracy. It's all down to a movable chute that can rotate through 220 degrees for precision dumping. This is an unstoppable winter warrior, but this Arctic Achilles has a vulnerable point. The main tooth to drive at the front of the plough is unprotected. A hefty bash at the centre of the plough could auger disaster. So they have made a weakness into a strength by fitting a battering ram there. And now it's ready for the runway. Bulldozers and sweepers feed the snow to the sides, giving the beast plenty to eat. 
this gang of vehicles are out on the runways every winter's day, keeping Oslo's airport running like very cold clockwork. No longer a simple soap, a 21st century detergent is born in the laboratory, not the laundry, and won't go into production until it's been scrutinised, analysed and generally tested to breaking point. So, how do they do it? Germany, the home of hygiene. Here, cleanliness isn't next to godliness, it's next to Dusseldorf. This is the 350-acre Henkel site, six kilometres from the city centre. And today they're working on a new improved detergent. The challenge is to create something chemically powerful enough to devour the worst stains, yet not so strong it damages clothes or the environment. It also needs to keep fabrics bright and appeal to the eye and nose of the consumer. The all-new chemical cocktail kicks off in the lab. The new detergent includes soap, colour protectors and water softening agents to prevent the build-up of minerals on your clothes. But surprisingly, there's no bleach. Instead, to see off stubborn stains like oils and ketchup, the lab adds two special chemical ingredients. Surfactants and enzymes. Surfactants effectively make water wetter while enzymes literally eat the stains for breakfast. Enzymes are small biological molecules that can attack certain types of stains, blood, egg. You can imagine them like tiny little Pac-Man that eat these stains and digest them. The new blend is still a long way from finished detergent. It's the wrong colour and it smells like a science experiment. But before they tackle those problems, first they need to know it can clean. And to check, they employ an astonishing level of testing. Many labs have a dust-free clean room. This one has a dirty room. Blood, sweat and tears go into this next process, but not from the staff. Here, a scientist cooks up an assortment of daily stains. Each one goes into a syringe and then passes to this computerised muck-making machine. Fifteen different syringes are inserted and as a piece of cloth passes underneath, a little rotating sponge grinds the product in. This machine can smudge on 10,000 stains per day, almost as much as a typical toddler. They now have their filthy fabric, but cleaning it right now would be cheating. According to the company, the average person leaves clothes in their wash basket for up to a week. So the sheets are hung up for a thorough drying, then stored in the dark. When the dirt is fully dried in, the sheets are loaded into the company's mega laundry. Cleaning products have come a long way since the ancient Romans used urine to wash their clothes. A typical washing machine cycle later, and the 21st century version is ready for testing. And here, that means a lot more than holding it up to the light. An eagle-eyed team closely inspect the sheets and check the results against previous detergents. Every stain, from grass to gravy, is graded and logged in normal and in UV light, which shows up marks that are invisible in ordinary light anything less than perfect, and it's back to the lab. But today's new brew has cut the mustard. The next question, is it too efficient? The danger is that too many cleaning agents will damage the fibres of our clothes. To ensure this doesn't happen, the destructive effects of the new formula are measured here. A washed sample is loaded in. The machine then stretches it to breaking point. By analysing the results, the company can adjust the ingredients to ensure that your clothes will be clean but won't fall apart when you put them on. But while the detergent may work perfectly, making it appeal to the consumer means adding two more ingredients. The first is colour. Detergents are often blue or green because people associate cleanliness with each of those colours. 
colouring is added to the new mix to make it easy on the eye and psyche. And as important as colour is scent. The job of making your clothes smell as good as new falls to one of Henkel's perfumers, Frank Rittler. It's uh, very challenging to, to develop a new fragrance because it's, it's not easy to, for example, create one fragrance who suits everybody. To create an aroma, Frank uses thousands of synthetic and natural scents, some costing a whopping 50,000 euros a kilo. To create a fragrance is a real art, and it can compare it to the, the art of a perfumer, like the, the, the work of a musician or a painter, and that's the same way a perfumer works. Once Frank's nose is happy, the chosen scent is added, and the new detergent is born. But they're going to need a lot more than this. Now it's time to scale up. Raw materials are stored in 100 cubic metre tanks outside. As these are piped in, they're joined by the perfumes and enzymes. The correct ingredients for the new detergent are then mixed in a gigantic 30 cubic metre agglomerator. Water is pumped in and blades mix the material into a fine gloop. All that's left now is to bottle it. The company's production line fills up over 4.6 million bottles and boxes each week. Enough to do over 100 million wash loads or clean the socks of everyone in England. And thanks to their new improved formula, those socks will be cleaner than ever.